It says I'm live. We'll see. Last time I tried this, it totally crashed. So give me some chat here that's about whether you can hear me or not and not whether I should turn slow mode off or not. My, uh, I just got a notification that said now would be a good time to turn to insert ads. Why would I do that? I don't know. I am live. That's good. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to engage the slow mode argument right now. I got when I when I was going to do my first live stream, I uh, I talked about with a couple other YouTubers in this space whose live streams you might have been on who strongly advised me to turn that on. Otherwise, the chat is way, way, way too annoying. So um, but if you want to make the argument, I, I, I do go back and read through because this moves too fast. I can't I can't read everything. It moves too fast even when I've got slow mode on. So imagine what would happen if I didn't. Um, but I'll go back and look at it later because it saves everything uh, when I um, when I save the video and um, put it in my library or whatever. And I'm early too. I'm s hey, I apologize. But <laughs> like, I'm pretty good at math. I think I'm really good at math actually, but I'm not good at uh, understanding what time zone I'm in. <laughs> I meant... I meant for this live stream to be at 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Pacific. I just thought that's a that's kind of a good sweet spot on a Sunday. I said, oh, okay. And I kind of reverse engineered that to 5 o'clock Mountain when I set the time for it. And I never disabused myself of thinking 5 o'clock was the correct time until I hopped on here like 20 minutes ago and saw people complaining about showing up an hour early. It's like... Why did people show up an hour early? I went, oh, yeah, because I told them to. That wasn't very smart. So anyway, um, yeah, my, my bad. Um, so hope uh, people um, didn't bail or I hope people didn't like kind of plan. I didn't think anybody planned their Sunday around something like this. But, you know, people have better things to do than sit around waiting for YouTube guy to show up. Um, so... Let's see. I don't want to. Okay, it is five o'clock. Um, but I don't want to get into the um, the order of business until until the people who want to talk about this video thing are on. Quad cities represent like like Dubuque, Moline, Rock Island, Davenport, Quad cities. I've been there. I haven't gone there for a long time. That's kind of an interesting spot because literally, like you literally wouldn't call it by just one city name. You would always call it Quad Cities. Um, please show cats. I've got a cat next to me, but she's sleeping. But she has a habit of popping up in pictures. She's like, if you look at the, I always keep this chair next to me when I'm working. And she's usually hanging out in this chair, um, napping or whatever, because cats Cats work hard all day, um, and then they need to nap, or they work hard, like whatever whatever uh, shift they work. Um, it's exhausting, and so they have to sleep a lot. She contributes so much to the household. Um, okay. Hello from St. Pete. Man, I enjoyed St. Pete. I don't know. Like I always, I think I always enjoy every city more than I think I'm going to, um, and St. Pete was no exception. It's cool. Not without its problems, of course, but there was a lot of a lot of cool stuff there. Okay. Or a couple of minutes after, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into the meat of the content. I just wanted to um uh so as I mentioned, so there's this video circulating. Um and a lot of people are watching it and a lot of people sent me um the link. Uh you know, starting probably a couple of days after after it hit, um saying, Hey, I think you should watch this. It raises some interesting points. Um and pe people who I interact with on like, you know, Twitter, Patreon or whatever, whose opinions um, I really respect. And so, um, cause otherwise I would look at something like this and think, oh, eh, it's kind of clickbaity and whatever. Um, so I probably wouldn't watch it. Um, or it might not even show up in my feed anyway. But um, uh, yeah, enough people asked and I thought about it and I thought, well, like I wouldn't usually like do a live stream react thing because I think that's kind of stupid, honestly. Um, but like I'm I'm kind of called out here, right? Like my my logo's in their thumbnail, and 
and like in the little description you can see that uh like i show up right after not just bikes so i kind of feel like okay so he talks about me so i think it's fair game for me to do like a reaction but i did when i put out notice on this i did want to be sure to say hey go watch this if you haven't already especially if you're going to join the chat and form your own opinions and not only that but like after we talk here um I think the the comments section on there, from what I've seen it, of it, is pretty interesting too. So if you leave there, leave the video running, and, and it's the nth review, right? Um, it's like a video game review channel. I think I I don't really know what he does, but um, but make sure he gets credit for the views and stuff, um, because that's what I don't like about like reaction videos. Kind of like you're stealing somebody's views by showing their video. Um, but if I sent enough people to go watch it, then I feel okay about it. And I feel like I'm within my rights to react to it since it kind of calls me out, I guess. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. Um, I don't even know, because I like I said, I haven't watched it. I watched like 90 seconds of it um, before I figured I should do it like a live stream or something. And then, so just a thing about um, thumbnails and, um, and titles, which are super, super important for the algorithm. Like this is a really good thumbnail in my opinion, because I saw it and I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what this video is about. It's like, step one is you watch a bunch of like urban, oh, I don't know, is Road Guy Robin an urbanist YouTube, well, whatever it is. You watch a bunch of urbanist YouTube channels. Step three is like, you live in Wakanda or something. I don't know what that is. Um, but it's, I guess, like ur an urban wonderland or something, although that's probably not what I would picture. But but I but I totally, like, I immediately grasp what it's trying to say, right? How do you get from watching YouTube to living in Wakanda, right? It's a reasonable thing to wonder. Um, and anyway, so, so I think it's a good thumbnail. I kind of hate the title, but it probably works really well, right? Um, urban planning YouTube has a huge problem. Like, I kind of, like, don't probably think that's the case i think there are criticisms you can make um well anyway like i don't know i don't know what he says maybe it does have a huge problem i'm not sure but but i see when i see it when i see a title like that i'm always like yeah they're probably overstating it and i'm trying to get you to click on it um but it's probably working right it's up over a hundred thousand views now i don't know like it's probably gonna get a lot of views because um, just his, his first week and I don't think there are probably any other videos necessarily like it so and a lot of people are interested so um, good on the nth review for um, creating a piece of content and packaging it well so that it got some traction and people are talking about it um, so uh, good deal um, so let's let's just start watching it so I'm going to disappear this thumbnail if I can I've never like run a live video on, I'm using OBS Studio. So like I tested it, it seems to work okay. Um, but we'll see. All right, and I'll probably pa I'll pause from time to time. I'll try it, I'll comment as needed, but I'll pause it so we can talk about some things too. Um, so I don't know, this is the beginning of the video. It's like some video game thing, I don't know. All right. This video might be a surprise since I usually make hours long videos about a variety of immersive sims and other games. But a few years ago on this channel, I was okay. on a real so urban planning kick. I talked about SimCity 2000, which is still yeah. my favorite city builder 30 years after it hit shelves. Uh, I'm afraid this is going to take a really long time because I'm going to keep pausing. Um, and I have seen this part, but I played SimCity 2000. It's pretty sweet. Um, and I think a lot of people. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what the percentage is. I think a lot of people come to like online urbanism through like city building games, like City Skylines, um, which is cool and good, I think. But I think it probably also kind of informs your expectations about like what urban planning is, or what transportation planning is, or what city building is. Um, and they're cool games, um, but it's a video game, so you know. Uh, anyway. I talked about how 2013 SimCity sized up against City Skylines, and I talked about the real impact oh, that people can have on their captions. Yeah, I can do that. Man, I never use, okay, just the thing. I never use, like it drives me, and this is probably like generational. It drives me crazy having like the words on the screen while I'm listening to the words, because usually it comes up just before I'm gonna hear something and it ruins a joke or it comes up, at, I don't know, I just, I just, I just can't stand it. But generational thing because i think i think younger people are kind of used to it or whatever i don't know 
future cities that city building games don't model. I even talked about what future city building games video need volume nowhere uh, in reality. I can do that. I can do that. How about that? Yeah. Reality. Does city leadership just sit at a computer and paint khaki landscapes with roads and zones? No, I haven't played City Skylines 2. Don't at me. At the same time I was doing all that, I was starting to get into actual advocacy in my own hometown of Colorado Springs. So I started watching urban planning Colorado and transit-oriented YouTube channels because I hey, wanted to understand me. the work that needed to be done, especially around pedestrian access and public transit. Is that the only time I appear in this video? I don't know. Well, he's got to talk about me or something, right? I bet he talks about not just bikes a lot. That's what, that's what I've heard. Um, whatever. Uh, okay, any other feedback on the... I just want to make sure I have the technical stuff, right? Okay, volume. Okay, I think it's probably fine. Um, yeah, I don't, like, I don't like the... I don't like, I don't like the... Oh, yeah, my picture's blocking the captions. I can move my picture. How about that? Do you guys really, really care about the captions? I don't know. I guess you do. Like I wouldn't turn them on if you didn't. Okay, I moved. I moved my picture. How about that? But now, now my logo is in front of the. How about that? How about I go up in the corner? Guys, live streaming is hard. There's so many decisions to make, like in real time, and stuff to do. Okay. Can we? Can we? Like, all right. This is good enough. Is it good enough? Is the video zoomed in? I don't know. It's like slightly zoomed in. Do you care that much? Does it matter? Um, whatever. Uh, you guys, you guys, you guys, it's just, it's hard to, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little zoomed in. I think you're gonna have to live with it. I don't want to screw around with it um it was hard to like just frame it the way i have it and i'd rather watch the video is it good enough good enough there's so m you guys are such nitpickers just stop transit as they say on the internet i was orange pilled by not just bikes the canadian transit advocate who moved to the netherlands yep world model who hasn't multimodal been? transit many of us have been activated by his snarky often angry commentary about how bad north american cities are and how developing or destroying cities for cars has made things so much worse for people and all forms of traffic even cars True. i've watched almost every single episode of city beautiful Auto insurance. Oh, you're gonna get this guy's until ads too. It's time to use it. I'm skip USAA, him. it's easy to file claims, yes. schedule, skip. which provides historical context around how cities used to be more walkable and livable. Oh. With by the way, you guys, I'm running this in incognito mode because I don't want you guys to know what ads I actually get when when I'm watching YouTube on my actual uh, Google account. No, it's not really that bad. That's just weird. colorful graphics made possible thanks to Brilliant. Get your first 30 days of Brilliant free by using <laughs> offer code. And if you've spent more than 30, oh man, <laughs> I've been I've been offered to do uh, promo promo ad reads for Brilliant, and I do. There, there there's a lot of stuff I've declined. That's, like, stuff like that isn't bad. I just I don't know. Yeah, I want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I get it. It's ingesting this kind of content, you know who Chuck Marone and Strong Towns are. You know what effective bicycle infrastructure should look like, and the pain of not having high-speed rail to zip between municipalities. You pine for when many American cities used to have trolleys. Inspired by these channels and some local advocates I got to talk to on a podcast I used to run, I bought a bike a year ago and learned a lot of Good ins job. and outs about bicycle transit too. Good. Induced demand, multimodal transit, mixed-use zoning, missing middle, parking minimums, road diagnosis, car dependency and many more terms have become the go so so the huge problem with urban planning youtube is clearly not like motivating people to like get a bike and like understand stuff more okay got that o2 jargon of these channels and those who watch them and that's where urbanist youtube has a big 
problem. <laughs> in seeking a more active role in my community, I would going never down do the that. urbanist YouTube rabbit hole oh, has man. really bulked up on my understanding of yes, urban planning sure. theory okay. and practice. If one more person recommends I read Jane Jacobs, I'm going to explode. It's shown me what effective traffic calming and bike... I don't know if I've ever recommended... Oh, I probably have. I think I did a video where I did book recommendations. Yeah, I mean, who, who could not recommend the death and life of great American cities? Okay. ...infrastructure should look like. No city is perfect, but it's not hard to understand how and why these things come together and how that pairs with the rising number of pedestrian fatalities in the years post-COVID. If we could just do something about it in our own cities, We'd be saving lives not just from the increasingly larger vehicles consuming our roads and killing our neighbors, but improving health outcomes by... I basically agree with everything so far. Um, yeah, jump scare close up. Uh, yeah, trying to make sure there are any things I need to respond to immediately. Everything's technically fine. That's good. Let's keep going by making active transportation, like walking and bicycling, more attractive. But over the years, the number of these urbanist channels has grown to the extent that many are just singing the same notes as everyone else in this new urbanist echo chamber. So I wondered, do I even need to make this video? I mean, there are already <laughs> lots of research papers, <laughs> articles, and videos about all of this all over the internet. Some by people <laughs> much more educated on this topic than me, but apparently, yes, oh, I do. God. Historical context. Um, did you guys watch? Uh, I think it's the most recent, not just Bikes video. I don't, I don't watch that much YouTube, um, but but it, but it's about induced demand or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, and so and I made a video about induced demand, which he references in his video. Um, and so I kind of felt like I wanted to watch Jason's take on it. I thought it was a pretty good video. That was really good, actually. Um, I know not everybody is loving Not Just Bikes right now, but if you're going to go watch a Not Just Bikes video, I think it's I think it's good. It raises a lot of good points um, that I didn't address in, in my video. Um, anyway. It is great. Urban terminology is fine. Understanding what effective multimodal transit and properly densified zoning are fantastic. But what isn't fantastic is reality. And this is the chasm where so many YouTubers leave their viewers at. Okay, so you want to make your city better. You know what fixtures your city should have. You know what your city should look like. But you actually know what to do with that knowledge. What these YouTube channels fail to engage with is where the top level urban planning lingo meets the figurative pavement civic engagement. As a member of my town's <laughs> Citizens Transportation Advisory Board, which yep. provides messaging and guidance for our city council, as someone who was a 2023 Colorado Springs Mayor Civic Leaders Fellow, as someone who loves my city and wants to see it get better. So, so my question immediately is, did he get on the Transportation Advisory Board before or after he was orange-pilled? Um, that's, yeah, I'm not saying that that invalidates what he's saying, but I mean, I know for sure I've got like tons of viewers who have told me, oh yeah, I got my city's planning commission or I'm on this advisory board or I'm going to grad school in planning or, or I'm doing this or that. And I was really, you know, your channel was really part of what inspired me or your channel inspired me. Um, so like i think i think a lot of people not me not everybody but i think a lot of people like know know what to do in their own community but maybe not i don't know i'm surprised at how many of these channels completely omit this critical function of urban planning and transit advocacy you know the part where you actually have to do stuff in a way, urbanist YouTube has given terminology to a kind of slacktivism that involves identifying problems, but then not educating people on how to make urbanist principles a reality. I made this video for two reasons. I'll get back to the first, but the second is a video by Strong Towns about whether or not you should stay in your city and try to make a difference now that you're cursed with the knowledge of what an ideal urban environment looks and functions like. As the video progressed, I was really, really hoping 
that he would talk with actual city officials. Have people watched this one? Um, this this uh, um, Strong Towns video. I watched some of it. I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel like it was aimed at me. It was. Um, there's an audience for it. It's just like there's a lot of this stuff that's just not f- for me, um, because uh, I don't know. Like, like I, I spent like 15 years in the planning profession. Like, there's stuff I don't feel like I need to learn. Um, not to say I know everything, but um, I don't know. Okay, uh, but but it's yeah. Like Mike over at uh, Strong, he's been making great. Like he's really up to their video, their YouTube game a lot. Um, he makes good stuff. So the people who actually do the urban planning and development, instead, it focused on small local groups that are affiliated with Strong Towns, which is a nonprofit. These groups meet in coffee shops and do guerrilla acts of urbanism, like painting lanes and parking spots. To- <laughs> uh. <laughs> Like, is this not a good thing or, um, there are a lot of, I mean, strong towns, strong towns chapters are kind of exploding. So the one in Albuquerque here, um, just started up like three months ago and now there are like monthly meetings that have like, like 80 people showing up and like growing. Um, yeah, that's, it's too early to say like how effective it is, but, um, it really demonstrates that the energy around it um so much of this like i think i talked about it in my last live stream is like it's really a matter of organizing and being able to figure out where like prioritizing issues and putting um people with different skill sets on different issues like it's an organizational issue it's not a everybody go do your own thing and and, and figure it out for yourself. It's like nothing ever really gets done that way. So anyway, um, yeah, all right. I, sh- I should watch more. I'm, I'm just struggling to see how um, forming Strong Towns local conversations is not a positive thing. Diet roads because they don't think their local governments move quick enough. Tiny groups can paint all the crosswalks they want, but they're not going to pour concrete to finish a sidewalk next to a fast arterial road that's known to kill pedestrians. They're not going to add a bike lane to a yeah, thoroughfare like a or establish a bus that. route out to an unsolved portion of the city. Things that are a problem in a huge, sprawly town like mine. They're not going to contribute to municipal master plans from the back of a Chipotle, nor the various code and zoning documents that governments use to actually define what the built environment should look and function like. These channels only seem to glance at the importance of civic engagement, much less understand it, much less recommend it. So why don't these channels engage in the hugely critical middle step between learning what a strode is and how to right. actually build the earth? And there's the thumbnail, right? The critical middle step. Like, I, I get what I get what he's saying. Um, because there aren't that many videos out there that talk about the nitty gritty of, like, what's the best way to engage city council or planning commission or your local your local planning staff to raise raise an issue that you think is important and get it on their radar um and you know i've talked about it like in my live streams and i occasionally talk about a um like i might highlight like a planning process this is going on around like a strode or something like that if i'm talking about that in a video but but so many of those are um they're, they're such a, uh, um, they're, they're all such unique projects. I mean, there's just not really a one size fits all for like how, how you should, how you should engage your city in like every single thing that you want to improve because the strategies are all going to be a little different. And also it's going to depend on like the type of, the type of person you are. Like I wouldn't recommend uh, going and speaking in front of testifying in front of city council necessarily for somebody who is just like super socially awkward or whatever, but there might be like great written testimony they can do or, or they could literally, I don't know, 
like the, there's all there's all kinds of things there's all kinds of variables with this that um i could talk about but also might make an extremely dull video and maybe makes that point i don't know urban environment that we want oh it's an ad because this is a generic uh incognito mode ad and i don't even know seaborn i don't know what it is i'm skipping it why are so many urbanism fans on YouTube completely uneducated on how you actually remove the car dependent way of thinking? That okay, <laughs> so I kind of take exception to that. I, I happen to think my viewers are pretty smart and capable of figuring things. Like, it's kind of weird. Like this guy says, um, I went and got on my transportation advisory board and the mayor what acknowledged me or whatever like i'm assuming he figured that out himself so he's kind of saying i can figure this out myself but all you people who watch these channel are not capable of doing that i don't know like there is more that i can do i think because my my audience is pretty it's pretty diverse i think it's fairly educated um but i also have lots of people who watch my channel who are like I don't know, like 16 years old or whatever. Like they don't, they don't have the experience of like, uh, like, and they're smart, but they just don't have the experience of like knowing how like processes work and, and stuff like that. So there are maybe there, I think there's maybe a role for, um, uh, you know, helping pe people who are like emerging adults or teenagers or, or whatever, who just really haven't had the experience yet of being involved in like civic projects. Um, I've given them some sort of primer about like what works and what doesn't work. And because um, I'll tell you some of the most powerful like council testimony I've ever seen or I'm aware of comes from like, like high school students. If a high school student comes up and like overcomes like the natural nervousness of being like a teen teenager speaking in front of like elected officials and delivers a powerful message like that's that's like the most like you you can't shout that down you can't you can't rebut that well um so if i have young younger people especially like teenagers out there watching just just know that 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 if if you're able to summon like the the courage to um to give testimony in front of like city council or planning commission on a project or an issue um during like open comment period or whatever super super powerful that's killing our cities and disintegrating our communities one four thousand pound suv at a time for one thing it's boring if you drop into a random city meeting you're gonna have to understand a yawning amount of introductions robert's yep. rules of order yep. slow procedural stuff yep. and more well oh, mr. mr president <laughs> it, it's not in the motion the withdrawal term okay so he knows what he's talking about i mean this is this is all true and maybe obvious um but as, as somebody who uh, uh who worked worked in this field and had to present information or powerpoints or whatever to city councils and stuff and having to sit and wait for my item to come up on the agenda um yeah yeah, it can be it can be pretty tedious, but it's also kind of interesting to see like how the business of government works and what 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 makes it onto the agenda, what makes it onto the actual agenda, what make, what, what they will put on the consent agenda that they don't discuss, and and um, what kind of discussion or even debate that they have, and getting a sense of because usually they already made up their mind about something like decisions don't really get made at city council they go figure out what they think and they make deals and they already know whether something's going to pass or not but but it's still i don't know like yeah it's kind of dry but it can be fascinating too so i wouldn't i wouldn't overstate the like the supposed dullness of of these kinds of proceedings it just depends on what's on the agenda too all right and terminology is not in the motion for two, it's very verbose and technical. It's literally why people go to school for this stuff. Something you'll experience in urbanist YouTube is that few of these creators are actually urban or traffic planning professionals, except maybe Dave at City Beautiful yep. or Ray at City Nerd. These other non-professional uh, creators- Okay. Uh, City Nerd mentioned. Um, do you guys know, I had dinner with Dave actually. Um, 
because I was in San Luis. How do you pronounce it? San Luis Obispo. Okay, if, if you have Nebula, you may have seen my video already. It's coming on Wednesday. Um, but I was in I was in San Luis Obispo last weekend. Yeah. Um, and I had dinner with Dave. Uh, we talked about uh, well, kind of some of this stuff too. But um, but yeah, Dave Dave's like a planning prof, right? And he worked he worked as a consultant for a few years too. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to uh, characterize like Dave's stuff, but like a lot of the reasons I think he started his channel was because he had this information that he had to explain over and over. And he always he kind of kept wondering, God, if I just had a video to show people instead of having to like deliver this PowerPoint, um, I would do that. And then he started making videos kind of with that idea in mind. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, okay, keep going including not just bikes and myself are enthusiasts and fans and we may know some key lingo but we're not in the bureaucratic murk fighting battles day to day something as simple as adding a bike lane becomes a thousand times more difficult when you understand how it actually gets done and how many people react to the proposal Effective urbanism is far more than just transit, and while people seem to think that effective multimodal transit is the turnkey solution to resolve all other urban planning issues, it isn't. For three, nimbyism and apathy. Nimbyism, or not in my backyard, is a philosophy that rejects... Um, just to go back, I just want to comment on like what he said about like uh, lots of... Uh like urbanism YouTube creators, like not having like a planning or engineering background or whatever. Like, I don't think that's a, I don't know. Like, I just don't think that's that important. I mean, I mean, my, my background doesn't, like it informs like the way I think about things and the way I approach talking about things, but that doesn't make my channel like better or more useful than somebody's channel who's just got the interest and enthusiasm and energy to make videos about it as I don't know like I, w I would definitely uh say that like like Jason he just makes really good videos I mean maybe maybe you don't like all of them and you know you can like or not like his tone or whatever um but his videos are really well done he writes um they're well conceived they're well written they're edited well, they're shot well. He, I don't know, they're structured. Like, like they're just really, they're well-made videos that, that do a good job of delivering the message he wants to deliver. And that's why he has like a 1.2 million or whatever many subscribers. Um, because um, people, people respond by watching them and then coming back and watching more. That's why the algorithm likes it. And that's why the people who are subscribers come back and watch them. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, I just, I just don't think that's a big deal. New important development for a variety of reasons. And it can be very hard to overcome even if it's for the betterment of the city as a whole. Here in Colorado Springs, people protest anything that can possibly even slightly obstruct our view of the mountains which was not something that General Palmer coded into our city charter. That's an urban myth. Setting aside the fact that the hills here obstruct the mountains plenty in this town, and there are already plenty of tall buildings, you can look at this photo I took of downtown Colorado Springs from Memorial Hospital nearby and see how much they- I, I don't know Colorado Springs. I haven't been there. Um, so he's kind of going deep on Colorado Springs stuff. That's cool though. Um, okay. They don't obstruct the view at all, um, you know, unless you're downtown. You can talk with peers about Strode's all you want. Organization is very necessary, but none of that means anything when NIMBYs are showing up at every city council meeting where you live to <laughs> shout down what you believe on the actual record. I think we all know They're this. Also the people running for and getting elected into positions that dictate city priorities. Yes. The average Absolutely. person only tends yep. to engage in city processes when they don't want something not when they do and typically only when it's hyper local to their neighborhood um that that's a really good uh little passage there um i think that's that's very uh that's observant and very well taken um and it's a huge 
a huge issue in planning uh, because every time I worked on like any kind of long range planning project, it's really hard to be get people engaged in that where you, where you're taking um, you're engaging the public on like what what should the priorities be for our twenty or twenty five year plan or whatever? What should we build? You know, what's important to you? It's really hard to get people to churn out for that. It's really really hard to get people. To, but but yeah, if if, if like there's uh, you know, God forbid there's a bike lane going in and taking out some parking spots in on, on like a couple blocks, like you'll get more people to show up for that than you will for like a, a 20 year transportation plan that determines how like $500 million is going to be spent. It's just, uh, that's just how it is. It's, it's like a human psychology thing. And I think that's, that's very good that he brings that up. My city asks for public input all the time for huge projects that will affect neighborhoods for generations to come and whether it's a lack of communications on the part of the city even though they physically mail everyone in the neighborhood or oh, it's yeah. apathy or any of the reasons we just talked about these meetings are usually empty a huge park yep. that's set to be built on so our true so true um yeah when, when i'm on a project like there's a there's a big line item for sending out like a bunch of mailers and figuring out how to promote like important meetings on social media or have them online increasingly so that like you reach people who can't just drop at the drop of a hat show up at a meeting at five o'clock um because you know the type of people who show up at and stuff like that um i've got a i actually had a super a couple of super so michael um only watched the induced demand video because he calls out Arlington in a positive light. Okay, good. Demetrius says, missing this video is that these processes are verbose and obtuse specifically to ex exclude the average person slash minorities. Tackling that issue slash system would do a lot <laughs> more good than going after YouTubers. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it depends what, what city you're working in. Um, Cause I'm used to, yeah, I'm used to working in the Portland region, which I think has been pretty progressive about finding ways, um, to be inclusive when it comes to this stuff, but I don't know, maybe not, maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm not as perceptive about that as I should be anyway. Okay, let's go. East side got feedback from about a thousand people online and only about 150 people from in-person gatherings. 150 or even a thousand people in a city of half a million isn't great. Unfortunately, voter turnout yep. when it comes to local issues versus turnout. Sorry, the good news is because that's true. That's true. You get shockingly low engagement on things that are actually really important. Is people, uh, I don't know, people think they don't have time for it or, or that their voice won't be heard. But the good news is your, your, your input or your comment or your, uh, God, that, that's almost, um, that's almost minimizing what it is. It's really your engagement, like it weighs that much more because there's so little other engagement. So just keep that in mind on this stuff. Um, cause you probably think, oh yeah, nobody's going to look at my comment. They look at your comment. They do. And if, if you re do a real, really well written, uh, really, uh, persuasive, um, comment, uh, it's going to make the rounds too. Um, people are going to, people are going to see it and talk about it. Like I've seen it happen a lot of times. Um, so if you're under the impression that like, your comment goes into like a black hole and is never seen by anybody. Maybe that does happen in some places. I'm just, I'm just speaking from my personal experience. So keep that in mind. Uh, another super chat. Uh, maybe we should just build this stuff without telling anyone. Yeah. <laughs> tactical, tactical, like heavy, heavy rail metros. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just go like excavate while no one's looking. Um, we'll go, we'll get a boring, a boring machine. Um, Build the light rail and the affordable housing without asking. And one day there's just less traffic and fewer people. Just less traffic and fewer people on the streets. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably not the answer. 
I don't know. It's wrong, wrong country for that. I mean, I guess if you could say, yeah, maybe we should live in, I don't know, maybe like Singapore or something. I don't know. Uh, During presidential election years, an office that has next to nothing to do with how your city operates is abysmal. City meetings and ballot boxes are where Ooh, urbanist guy advocates need to show up in force if they want to get any meaningful change accomplished. Seriously, urbanists could win elections and change the shape of their cities just by getting five of their friends to vote for them in off-year races because turnout is usually <laughs> so terrible. For four, local study. It's easy uh, to understand... That's an exaggeration, but, but I think the point concepts. is taken. But what's hard is understanding how it affects your city in particular because everywhere is different. I can understand how old Colorado City formed just down the hill from gold towns like Cripple. <laughs> just a quick comment. This guy's background music is worse than mine, and it's up way too high in the mix. Maybe you don't agree, but it's like it's like, it's like some kind of Mario Kart music or, or something like that. And I don't know if it... Whatever. It's fine. It's not distracting. But I think about that a lot, because I like to have like a little bit of... Like something kind of almost subconscious in the background as like an anchor. I don't know, whatever. You guys should let me know what you think about like, cause, cause I've definitely got a comment that said, yeah, you shouldn't put any any music in the video. It should just be like silent. And I feel like, I don't know, I kind of need some kind of animation back there or something. Anyway, Chris, maybe we should just, yeah, I already saw that one. And then uh, I think Michael had another comment about like jargon and why jargon is necessary. Yeah, you need some precision with language around this stuff. Um, okay, got it. Okay, David Lynch bass drone. Yeah. Anyway, I'll go back and I'll read because I'm sure I'm sure you guys are giving me input on on some of this stuff, and I want to kind of go through the video and not spend a whole lot of time engaging comments. Um, okay, cool. Well, Creek, or how our bustling downtown came to be before the vast urban sprawl came when we invited five military installations to set up shop on the fringes of town. Man, you got to be. Uh, just knowing from experience, you got to be careful with Google Earth um, uh, Studio, because um, if you move things too fast, like people can get dizzy and stuff. So I've, I've really tried to slow down like my animations. Um, anyway, yeah. Like so, if I get, if I get nauseated during this uh, live stream, you'll know why. And after World War II. Understanding your city's history is a huge step in understanding how you solve its problems. Urbanist YouTube doesn't talk about this a lot, if at all. Let me ask you something. Oh. Who's your city's traffic engineer? Who's your city planner? Who's your city council person? Who's your mayor? Do you even live in a city, which is not always what the postal service says it is? If you don't, who are your county commissioners? If you're not in the United States, like I am, who okay, uh, I I guess I, I guess this is good, um, but I just I don't know. So maybe I make assumptions. Um, maybe maybe I do need to tell you all to like know who your mayor is or whatever. I don't know. I'd like to think I don't have to tell you that, but I could be wrong. Who's in charge of these decisions? Have you seen a city budget or master plan of which your city should have several depending on size? Do you yep. know what actually funds your ability to build infrastructure or enable services? Is it out of a general fund, state allowance, or a regional sales tax? These are just the... Yeah, see, I don't think everybody needs to know all that stuff. I think it's good to know if you're interested in it, but I don't think everybody who wants to change their city for the better needs to know about all the fundings. Like if you're on the actual committees um, that talk about this stuff, then yeah, you need to know about all that. But if you're just somebody who's trying to give input and build political support for like some improvements, um, like I don't, I don't think we should be asking people to learn all of that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily important. Um, it's it can be interesting if you're into it but but I don't, I don't think it's necessary top level questions a few critical things you really need to know to meaningfully advocate for urbanism yeah you can watch not just bikes he's an entertaining and popular youtube channel but do you know who to email when there's something wrong with a trail or why yet another <laughs> use google isn't that what you did i mean i don't know like 
Yeah, I don't know the email address off the top of my head, but I can certainly like find it in like 15 seconds. Like, are you going to go watch Not Just Bikes to figure out like what what the phone number is for <laughs> like filling in a pothole? Like, I don't think anybody expects that, but I could be wrong. Your car wash was approved for construction. Does your city have an app where you can report potholes like Colorado Springs does? For five, these YouTubers may not actually know how to make things better. It's possible. Oh, Subway sandwiches. It's not good. This is like the worst bread. That's not a churro. That's not good. I don't care about this. Oh, I'll have to sit through this one. It's not even that they're tired of engaging city officials um, or combing. Would you eat churros from Subway? That's that's the question. Um, I mean, I'm gluten intolerant, so I wouldn't either way. But it, but yeah, I don't think I would. Like the bread isn't even good. How are they going to make a good churro? It's just not happening. Through lengthy bureaucratic Costco, though. Like if you go to Costco, has a churro. It's it's that the entire topic doesn't pop up at all. It's really easy to believe that so many urbanist content creators may have been orange-pilled either watching a couple of Not Just Bikes videos, read a bunch of Strongtown articles, and are just regurgitating that stuff when they've clearly never been to a city council meeting before. In fact, it's actually kind of annoying when one-note urbanists show up there to deliver the same spiel they give at every other meeting when it's clear they don't engage with the process otherwise. Unfortunately, without some context, some people may want to pursue an urban planning or traffic engineering degree after digesting urbanist YouTube content, <laughs> not realizing. <laughs> yeah, that happens. But a lot of people uh, tell me they applied or got into grad school because of either my channel or just urbanism YouTube in general. And I don't know how, how to feel about that. Um, it's probably good. Um yeah, and the thing about, like, I don't know, urbanists who show up at city council meetings and don't engage the... Pro like, they're showing up at the city council meeting. Like, they're engaging something. Um, it's, there's, probably a, there's probably a point there. I don't know. I, I, do, I do think, like, um, uh, certain... I don't know. Like, certain urbanist-type people... Um, could uh could rub city council people or obviously rub this guy the wrong way i don't know like i don't i try not to worry about that very much everybody's got their own like personality type and everybody deserves to like be heard if they have the courage to like give give testimony or public comment at like a council meeting i don't know like yeah, that, uh, that seems nitpicky to me. That A, they're probably going to have to move to where the job is needed, and B, your decisions are going to be weighed down by whoever the local politicians are. If you're a YIMBY in a NIMBY administration, expect to get shot down a lot. The thing is, even yes. if you're... Yes, yes. Um, yeah, oh making a change the kinds of changes like a lot of us care about uh um like it's important to go give like testimony and stuff but if the politics aren't right then like it's probably not going to happen right um and so that's really the like the higher level issue is how do we change the politics and that's where, that's where strong towns i think is really good um i think the approach with the local conversations is a good one it probably doesn't work for everybody and, and like the like the vibe or the aesthetic or the style of strong towns isn't going to be for everybody. But I think that is the right way to go. Um, so you, you have to organize and you have to, you have to find a, a community of people who care about the things you care about. And because that, that's how you grow stuff. People start talking about it. They start talking to their coworkers and friends and neighbors about it. Oh, I'm going to this meeting. Um, it's not something they're keeping to themselves. They're, 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 um, I don't know. That, that's how political change happens, and that's how um, opinions opinions change. Um, it takes it takes time. It doesn't like happen all at once. Um, you, you, I don't know. You change the conversation, right? You, you put something else on the agenda of like what people are thinking about when they're navigating their city every day. Um, it's like people who watch my channel. They say, 
Like I hear this all the time. It's like, man, I, I never thought about what issue X, Y, or Z until I saw your channel. And now I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop seeing it everywhere I go. Like it's kind of the same thing as like, it, it's, it's like a kind of virality, right? Like people talk to each other and they become aware of things like, oh yeah, it shouldn't be that way. Why is it that way? Like this is a rich country or this is a rich city or, or state or whatever. Like why, why, why do we, you know, why do we have infrastructure or a built environment that is, you know, is worse than the cities and countries that have like a quarter of our GDP per capita? I don't know. I think, I think lots of people are receptive to that kind of argument or, th or thinking, but, but yeah, like, like a lot of this is just like political and, and building a movement. And I'm not saying I'm trying to build a movement. I try to make like mildly funny videos about like top 10 lists and stuff, but it's, it's got pieces in it. I, like it's kind of, I always say it's like a Trojan horse for, for like other stuff. And um, anyway, I'm going to hit a few supers. Sorry. I will go back through all these, but I do want to hit the supers. I'm missing some, whatever. Um, one thing is apparent, nearly everything he's stating is heavily filtered through his own point of view and knowledge. I mean, yeah, that's that's how the human brain works, I think. Yeah, I think he's got maybe a little bit of a blind spot. Like, I, I as a lay person can figure all this stuff out, but everybody else who's watching Urbanist YouTube can't do that and needs their hand held. I don't know. Like, I want to be, I want to be more... Uh, um, I want to be kinder than that because I think this is a good video um, and it raises a lot of good stuff. And he says a lot of things. He, he articulates a lot of stuff that um, that people should hear. Um, so I like all that. But I also think mm, like it, it's a, there's, there's something weird about saying, yeah, I figured all this out and, and you can't, you need your hand held. Um, uh, and just hit any of these that are questions. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is just like you you guys talking to each other, and that's good. That's kind of what most, most of what the live stream is Studying for. how to implement a better bicycle network or where bus routes should go and how often, it should be easy to see how transit issues bleed into other aspects of your city. Unfortunately, in the bubble of urbanist YouTube, many discussions begin and end with roads, sidewalks, and buildings next to them. But the base unit of a city isn't a road, a sidewalk, or a building. It's the people who live there. There's nothing wrong with specializing in transit advocacy and focusing on cars and bike lanes. But if you look just beyond that, you can engage in the big brain next level discussions that will actually improve your city, even if transit is a part of it. If you understand how people informed urban planning and how that urban planning sculpted neighborhoods near you to promote things like okay. racism uh, and wealth and health inequalities, you can begin to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, not every urban planning video talks about, like, redlining or why freeways were constructed the places they were but a lot of them do um i don't think you necessarily need to know like all the history of everything to to care about this stuff and be able to be able to make a difference but i mean i think people should know about that stuff i think it's interesting um and it's good to make videos about too have you guys seen um i have to recommend if you haven't seen it um, if you know the segregation by design, uh, I don't know if it's primarily like an Instagram account or, but he has a YouTube channel too. And he put up this great video about the construction of the, the Santa Monica freeway through, um, um, through the historically black neighborhoods, just to the Southwest of downtown. It's like, it's kind of like his normal thing where he, it's got the animations, but it's also got lots of good historical photos and he narrates and it's written really well. That video should have like a million views. So go watch, like, I don't know, go watch it. Go find it and watch it. It's whatever his latest video is. Understand even more complicated things. For some examples, how effective is your local police force and why? Where are your city's food and medical deserts? Does your city have public art? And uh, you just... where is it? You don't Who need to know all it? of this. Few you urbanist YouTubers seem this. to understand that knowing... You don't need to know... 
Like, if you don't care about public art, you don't need to know all of that. If, like, food deserts are important, but if it's not your thing, if it's not something you, like, you deeply care about, like, you don't have time to care deeply about every possible, or maybe you do, I don't know. But most people don't have time to care about every possible thing. I think it's interesting stuff to know about and stuff you have to know about if you're actually a professional planner, but the lay person doesn't know, need to know all that stuff. They just don't. These things are critical to altering the trajectory of a city, much less advocating for it, especially when the built environment and the social environments that exist on top of it are so immense, old, and established. And this leads me to Jason Slaughter, the creator of Not- Oh no, it's gonna, okay. Uh, I just think, um, like, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to make um, the act of getting involved in issues in your community and trying to make things better. Like, I would never want to make that sound like a like an insurmount, insurmountable task or, because um, it's not. Like, you can, I don't know, it is kind of a la carte. You know, all these things are connected. Like, food deserts are connected to transportation and housing affordability and racism. Like, all those things are connected. But you can, like, as a citizen, you can definitely, like, kind of a la carte pick your issues. And the people who are, like, getting paid to do the planning and the public engagement, they're, they're the ones who figure out how to balance all those things and make sure that they're not having unintended consequences. That's not your job. As a, as a citizen. Um, so I kind of feel like he's confusing like what the requirements are for like a planning process and what a professional planner needs to do versus like what is required of a citizen to be effective in their community. Cause they're just not the same thing. Not just bikes. And the first reason why I wanted to make this video. Slaughter seems to know what a city needs at its very essence to enact meaningful change and effective regulation over a long period of time. Slaughter's been to and lived in a lot of cities. He's even been yep. an advocate himself, but yep. advocacy tuckered him out and he and his family had the privilege to settle in one final location, the Netherlands, one of the best places in the world to- How do you know it's final? I don't know. Can you read his mind? Like maybe, maybe he'll get bored. Maybe he'll get bored if like all the like legalized naughty behavior and and like uh i don't know have you guys been to amsterdam like it's cool it's cool i would definitely visit again um and it depends where you are right but 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 like the center part of the city uh is often just like overrun with like i don't know just a lot of like dudes on vacation from england like uh just looking for like unsavory things to do and i don't know like it's, it's not like oh, if I was looking for like the ultimate city to move to and I didn't care about like being close to my family or friends or like I didn't think I was going to miss like American culture or whatever. And like American culture isn't like the greatest culture, but it's, it's what I grew up with. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I have a soft spot for a lot of American culture, but Amsterdam wouldn't be my choice. I don't know what like that might be an interesting question. Like what would be my choice? I don't know. But it wouldn't be Amsterdam. I would visit it again. But anyway to experience effective multimodal transit. I had a very brief interaction with him on Twitter when I did my SimCity versus City Skylines review, and he seems like a nice guy. But back in July, he posted a series of now deleted tweets saying that attempting to change urban oh, plans no. in North America is a completely wasted effort and to- Are people familiar with this? I don't know. Like, like if you, if you follow like urban planning like drama or whatever closely you'll have, you'll have seen all this so whatever i'll just let him talk not about try it. doomerism basically as someone who is deep in his advocacy efforts to change my city's fabric for the better it was a punch in the gut from someone i admired and learned a lot from slaughters yeah i think a lot of people felt i mean i saw a lot of that kind of reaction on twitter it's like oh man this is the guy who really got me into urbanism stuff and now he's like telling me to like that it's hopeless and I should just move out of my country or whatever. I don't know. I think that's like probably oversimplifying what Jason said, but, but it was kind of like that. Um, yeah, a lot of people did have a lot of heartburn over that. And I, I get that. Um, but I'll let, I'll let this guy say his piece. I don't want to comment on it too much. Um, <laughs> my, 
Michael Michael's on fire with the with the super chats. <laughs> when Garrett Wilder kicks him out for being an immigrant. That's not nice. Is he an immigrant? I don't know. Is he like a naturalized Danish person yet? Or a Dutch person? Sorry, I get I get Danish and Dutch mixed up. I got knowledge on effective advocacy rarely seems to poke through on his channel where he maintains a similarly militant tone to his tweets. He gets to enjoy a city where they've already fought and won against the automobile in a decades-long battle that he didn't have to fight in. He gets to yeah, preach from an ivory tower and enjoy all the benefits of being a transit refugee criticism. with the money and resources to be able to do it. And to be fair, he's always been very transparent that that's always been the point of his channel. But that's even if true. Slaughter's tweets didn't permeate through his audience, there are so many fans of his channel channels who have said that they wish they could just move away from the bad planning and suburban eh. sprawl. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time like defending Jason here because, I don't know, we kind of a friend? I don't know if he's, I don't know. Like, we talk a little bit. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, he has, like, he has been kind of clear that, like, the point of his channel wasn't to like teach you how to advocate or whatever. And I think he usually sends people to strong towns, which is something I do too. Um, and then like this thing he's, he's about to launch into about um, people wishing they could just move away from, like I'm guilty of this too, because I make a lot of videos, including this Swing States one I did last Wednesday. Um, I make a lot of like some, and there's some of my, my more popular videos. It's like, where are some cool places that you could move to if you value urbanism? And you have the wherewithal to move, right? And is affordable. Like, I love doing that kind of analysis. And people, obviously, to a certain extent, um, enjoy the discussion um, and, like, whatever whatever hidden gems or whatever I can uncover. Um, but it is, it is along those lines. It's like, I'm, I'm telling you, oh, yeah, you could move to, like, another place that might be a better situation for you. But, yeah, moving isn't the answer for probably the vast majority of people people have things that tie them to where they are um so whatever um yeah so so i think i think there's there's uh there's some it's kind of an interesting point in there that he's making all of the united states or canada to a scandinavian paradise where transit advocates there have already done all the hard work if slaughter actively believes that advocacy is a dead end What's the actual point of his channel except to bitch and moan about car <laughs> dependency in North America? How valuable is that, actually? Advocacy <laughs> is hard. Showing up for meetings uh, is difficult. I don't know. Difficult. I think that's kind of a harsh interpretation of what Jason does on his channel. Huh? I mean, the guy literally earlier said that he was orange-pilled, right? And lots of, lots of people have been, like, whatever, whatever the terminology is for that. A lot of people were turned on to this stuff by watching jason's channel and he doesn't only ever make like videos where he trashes things he does that sometimes but he makes a whole lot of videos also and it, like like i literally never watched jason's channel like before i started my channel i had watched reese's i think and alan's channels and i think i'd watched um oh, the Ur urbanity was was around just to get a feel for like are other people making things that are similar to kind of what i want to do and i saw nut to spikes pop up um, and it was like a thumbnail with that said not just bikes and it was orange and I think it had a bike on it and I thought oh that's about like the Netherlands and like bike infrastructure or whatever which I kind of like I kind of know about like I've been to the Netherlands and, and I've studied that stuff in planning school and also like if you go if you go to like planning school like you will never get away from people who won't shut up about their like semester abroad in Amsterdam or Utrecht or wherever Delft um, and tell you how great it is and blah, blah infrastructure. And I thought, yeah, I don't really need to see any more of that. But, but Jason's channel is a lot more than that. It's not just bikes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like he makes a lot of videos. They're like, Hey, Here's 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 a cool way that this town in the Netherlands does this thing, um, and honestly, like a lot of a lot of American cities try to adopt, usually not with much success, but you will see, like Woonerfs and, um, like like the protected inter intersections that we see today in American cities, you know they're 
you see more and more of them. They're not always really well done, but I think those more likely come from Denmark, actually. But but there's a lot of stuff that um, ideas that we bring over from the Netherlands, and, and Jason highlights a lot of that stuff. Um, I think that's important. It's not all like trashing North America, right? The cult. Keeping track of your city's machinations, leaders, and schedules is frustrating. I get it. Yet another urbanist is yet another YouTuber who got so frustrated at the car dependency and lack of public transit around him <laughs> in his hometown of Reno that he also fled for greener pastures. Introducing people to these high-level concepts <laughs> is a victory. But if even one what? out of a hundred... That's really funny. I mean, that's a, that's kind of a small channel. Why is he picking on yet another urbanist? Or he moved... He was in Reno, Nevada for a while, and I think did he move to Seattle or whatever? Like I don't I don't know what the story is. Did he move because like Seattle had better urbanism or like Seattle's more exp well, it's not that much. Oh, like, Reno's kind of expensive, actually. I had Reno in my swing state video. Um I don't know. Like there are lots of reasons you would move from Reno to Seattle that aren't just like like just for opportunity um and diversity or whatever. I don't know. Like a lot of things that like conservatives hate about cities are are great in Seattle. Sorry, had to be political. I'm sure there are lots of cool conservatives who care about this stuff. That's what I've heard. Um, okay. Hundred or one out of a thousand of not just bikes as million plus subscribers went out and took to urban advocacy in a really serious way. That's where you'd actually begin to see the earth move, literally. I love walking around my city, even if it takes forever to get to most destinations and downtown is a two plus hour hike away. I love biking around my city, Good for you. even if the only Good way you're you. getting to- What is this, Colorado Springs? Looks all right. I don't know. Um, haven't been there, but okay. To Go. some places is by narrow, broken sidewalks. I love using public transit where that time Good. is mine to do what Good I job. please. Even if our bus network... See, now you're making the videos you're complaining about. You're telling telling me how great like biking and walking and taking transit is. I'm going to make a reaction video. Or I'm going to make a video that tells tells people you're you're a problem for enjoying that stuff and talking about it. Seems to end where the city did in 1999. Advocating for actual change is a hard ask, but it's necessary because it's an uphill battle. We already have so many NIMBY conspiracies and anti-urbanist <laughs> misinformation true, to overcome. True. Like the idea that 15 minute cities are a nefarious scheme by the government to control the masses, or that expensive rarely used pedestrian bridges are the only way to reduce pedestrian fatalities, or that city buses aren't actually havens for drugs. Yeah, yeah. See, and these are the things that are fun to talk about and make videos about. I mean, see, but, that's that's part of this, right? Is what what makes for an interesting video? Cuz YouTube, I don't want to make a boring video that nobody's going to watch. Like I bet there are videos on YouTube that do exactly what he is talking about that like are very prescriptive about like how to provide input at a city council meeting. Um but those are always going to have to be like really specific to like uh I don't know. Not necessarily, but 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 they kind of have to be specific to a location. So you, your audience is necessarily small. I don't know. Like, it would be hard to have a viable YouTube channel that does that. So, so I think that's another issue. Um, and he's probably aware of that. Um, so that is maybe that's like a structural problem with urban planning YouTube is the fact that it doesn't really like pay or it's not satisfying or you won't get the views if you make a video about like how to how to report a pothole in Fairbanks Alaska it's not going to get a lot of views um I don't know I, I guess that's a problem use in public a huge problem our cities All weren't caps? created as car dependent nightmares or sprawled out the way they are now with seas of empty parking lots we had to spend generations making them this way. At the very least, it's going to take generations to reverse that damage. Unfortunately, uh, many- Don't say that. It's probably true. That's probably true. I mean, I think I, uh, we're getting to the end here. Um, I think I generally, generally agree with a lot of what he's saying. There's a little bit of, um, 
Um, I don't know. There's a little bit of like, I, I as a lay person was able to figure all this out, but you need help figuring it out. Um, and I figured it out in my own city. So some of this is like context dependent. Um, but I think he's probably, he's probably right that the urbanist, urbanist YouTube probably probably hasn't yielded as much political action as it could or should, but I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but, but it probably is. Um, and that like we as urbanist YouTubers can be more like strategic about how to get people to that next step or that next level, or I hate to say encourage it. Cause I never want my channel to be preachy or telling people what to do. Um, so it's, it's always tricky. Um, Cause if I make boring, preachy, arrogant videos, then I think people will not watch. And then what's the point? Um, but I, th but I think there are things, I don't know. Like I would definitely take some of this to heart. I think there are people who could use some help, like figuring out how to get engaged. Um, yeah. So I'm glad I'm watching this. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Many popular urbanist YouTubers aren't using their platforms to tell you how to actually make your neighborhood a oh, better place. Oh, Joseph Margolis, whose, whose opinion I, I respect highly, and he respectfully says something to me, so I, 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 I echo his respect. I think you're defensive. Have you considered that his critique is a, as a compliment to the content you create? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of one of my first thoughts when I realized, uh, oh yeah, there's a video, there's a video that's getting some traction that, um, that kind of calls out or, or is kind of like contrarian about like urbanist YouTube. And I think, don't think like that kind of tells you that like urban planning YouTube or whatever. Oh yeah. It's a big enough deal to get like call out videos now. Like that kind of tells you it's reached a certain threshold. Um, so yeah, there, there's a little bit of like a compliment in there. I don't know if it's intended as a compliment, but I think I definitely kind of perceived it that way. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely, I was a lot more defensive when I realized there was a video like this, like a few days ago. Um, I think I'm less defensive now, but at the same time, like, I don't know, like aren't, uh, I don't know. It depends on the person. I just think it, I just think it's weird um, to say that uh, pe people people can't figure this out, but this guy's figured it out. Um, like it, it, I don't know, kind kind of rubs me a weird way. Okay. They're simply and generically describing the shape of what they should look and function like. This really is a matter of planting trees whose shade you'll never enjoy. And nothing's going to get done if you mm. sit on the internet reposting urban. Yeah, yeah, I just wouldn't want to be that pessimistic about how quickly change can happen. Like, I hate, I hate to bring up the Amsterdam example, but it didn't take them, like, a generation to reverse a lot of the stuff they reversed. Um, and obviously, it's politically different and, and all of that. But I think, I, uh, like, if you go into it thinking, yeah, I think if you go into it thinking, yeah, it's going to be, 30 years before anything happens, which may be true. I don't know, but, but I don't know. Like the, that's not the message you want to send. There are definitely things. Um, uh, it's, it's all politics. Like if the politics are aligned for something, then it happens fast. So we have to get the politics right. Okay. Portland, Maine, maybe. Edmonton. He moved to Reno to Seattle. Seattle is our favorite city to visit. Okay. His tweets. If you want to wean people off using their cars oh, for yeah. every single thing that cool they building. need to do, you have to build options that are better and more convenient than using a car. If you want to build better <laughs> neighborhoods, you have to. I don't even remember that video. What? I almost have to rewind it. I must have made a video about. It. Oh yeah, yeah. I kind of remember that. I kind of remember that. Uh, I miss. I miss Spain. Damn it.
joy. Okay. And nothing's going to get done if you sit on the internet reposting urbanist tweets. If you want to wean people yeah, off using their video. cars for every single thing that they Valencia. need to do, you have to build options that are better and more convenient than using a car. If you want to build better neighborhoods, you have to understand the complicated matrix that created those neighborhoods in the first place. Like the fact that downtown Colorado Springs uh, doesn't have many of the amenities needed for a neighborhood, even as it's adding thousands of residential units right now. It's fine to learn the lingo, but it's better to actually show up where you live and engage the machinery that yeah, makes the actual I agree changes with that. happen. I agree with Hell, that. Hell, maybe you can run for office. Maybe. Maybe. Um, okay. That was the video. Um... Yeah, I, I, I just I just kind of disagree with the you have to know everything before you can give effective public input. I think you can be you can maybe be more effective doing that. But again, I think that's something for um, pro the professional planners. They're the ones who are responsible for knowing how everything is connected. You don't you don't have to have the burden of understanding like every single thing in order for your voice to be heard. It just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Um, it might be better, or you might enjoy it. Um, so do it Do it if you enjoy it, and do it if you, if, if you think it'll make you more effective. But don't, it shouldn't be like a threshold criteria for for you getting involved. Um, all right. Okay. I That was kind of my live reaction. I, I literally hadn't watched it. I had a pretty good sense of what the video was about but um but i wanted to be open-minded to like the good points he was gonna make and um uh and and, and i just acknowledge that like i think i think there is probably i have no way of knowing but there is probably like uh um an underutilization of the energy around like the topics that I talk about, um, as far as like engaging cities. Um, but I mean, an all I have to do is all I have is to, to go off of his anecdotes and I hear from people all the time who say, Hey, I got on my planning commission because, you know, you really inspired me to get involved. And I don't know, like, that's what I want to do. I want to get people involved in the politics of it to help influence um, the types of things their cities focus on. Um, it's not my it's not my intention to uh, create technical how tos of like how to um, how to resolve or or begin to. Um, give input on the myriad issues that might exist in your city. And those are going to be different for every city. Um, okay. So I'm probably going to jump off because we're already like at 616, but I wanted to get through the whole video. Um, okay. And I will go through these later. Um, you guys, I just want to be appreciated. Don't, doesn't this guy care about what I do? I just want to be appreciated. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, and he gave me a, like a compliment or whatever, right? I guess sort of me and Dave, he thought we were cool because we actually had like a professional background or whatever. Um, uh, and like, I'm not really a gamer, but that was a good video. Like it was well done. Uh, the music was a little high in the mix for me, but, but he was thoughtful. Um, and he wasn't mean spirited. I don't think, um, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of put Jason on blast. Um, I don't know. Yeah. But whatever. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just don't know if I really have much else to say about it. So, um, cool. Oh, you appreciate me. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably not going to change too much of what I do based on watching this video, but I will think about it. Um, it's something just because I've had a lot of people say that they thought it was an important video and you made some good points and I think you made some good points. Um, so I'll probably be a little mindful, um, 
about what I talk about and if there's an opportunity to, because I'll never make a video that's just about like a tutorial of how to do this or that. But I do like to insert, when I have the opportunity, I like to insert um, mostly jokes, <laughs> but things that are interesting. Um, and I like to go on tangents. So there's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about like what makes for effective advocacy and how how this happened or whatever. I'll I'll try to do that. I mean, I, I do that sometimes. I don't know. I just don't do it. Like it's not appropriate for every video I make. I don't know. It's definitely got me thinking. So that's good. That's what the video should have done. Okay, you guys. Um, the cat has been kind of, did the cat ever show up? I don't know. She's been kind of like, like napping the whole time. Anyway. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining. I'll go through the chat later. Um, and and uh, we'll talk soon. See you later.